Okay, so uh, let's review the homework. Um, if we take one masslet away from the eight masslet object and give it to the two masslet object, by what ratio will the amount of gravitational force between the two objects change? All right, so we know that initially we had two times eight, which is 16. And then in the new one, we're going to have three times seven, and that equals 21. So the force two to force one is just going to be 21 to 16. All right, if we imported enough mass from Jupiter to make the moon three times as massive, by what ratio would the force of the moon pulling on the Earth change? So the force due to gravity um, is equal to g mass of the Earth, mass of the moon over radius of the or our Earth moon squared. So if m is now three times bigger, then I would put like a three right there, and so the force would be three times bigger. And then what effect would this change have on the ocean tides? It would increase the tidal effects. All right, the mass of the moon were increased to three times its present size, and the distance to the moon increased to twice the present distance. How would the gravitational force attracting the moon to the Earth change? Um, it would decrease. And again, we're going to look at proportional changes. There are different ways to do this. And um, at some point I will have, um, I will give you like three different options, but I'm just gonna do kind of quick and dirty. So we have here is our original. And then our new one is going to be G um, M1, and then now three times M2. And then we're gonna have two, we've got twice the distance squared. And if we solve that, we get three, no, oh, I'm over too far. Three G M one M two over four R squared. And the reason we have a four is because this two times two comes out as four. And as we look at this figure, that is just my original force if I compare it to this. And so my new force is three fourths as big. Okay. So the ratio of the new force to the old force is three quarters, or if you want me to write it out, it will be F2 to F1 is equal to three fourths. Or another way of thinking about it is F2 is equal to 3 fourths F1 because this is F1. All right, if the moon could be moved, by what ratio would the gravitational forces between the Earth and the moon be changed under the following conditions? So again, we can think about our F1 is G M1 M2 over R squared. Our F2 we are making the R three times as big. So I have G M1 M2 over three R squared, three times as big. I'm just gonna pull that out. So, or pull out this three squared. I'm gonna take the squared through the parentheses. And so that is going to give me um, one ninth G M1 M2 over R squared. And so that just tells me that F2 is one ninth as big as F1. All right, that was A. B, moon moved to one third as far away. All right, so we've got the same F1. Our F2 is G M1 M2 over one third our whole quantity squared. And so this is just math. So I'm going to have 1 ninth R squared. But then when I um, change the improper fraction, then I have, I'm doing ninth. Okay, no, that's good. So we have 9 times G M1 M2 over R squared. But remember, this is just F1. So we've got F2 is equal to 9 times F1. 
All right, that was B. C, moon is moved two times as far away and the moon's mass is increased to four times its present mass. I'm gonna do this in a different color. So this is C. So our F2 is equal to G, M1. M1 is gonna be the Earth. And then the mass is four times. So we've got four times M2. And then our R, we've got two times R squared. And so I'm just gonna pull this out. Two squared times R squared is how I resolve that parentheses. So I've got four on top. This four is this four. And then G, M, one, M, two. And then the four, R squared, since these two are the same, F2 is equal to F1. So. All right, number five, explain what is wrong with the massive diagram for gravitational force between the three objects shown. Well, it's not showing anywhere close to as many lines as it should because every mass on each object should attract every mass. And so um, this one, sh I should also have a line here and a line here and then a line to there. And then for the other one, I should have a line to here, a line to here, and a line to there. So every masslet attracts every other masslet. Consider the following diagram, blah, blah, blah. The force acting on C will change under each of the following conditions. A changes to two masslets. No change because, um, it doesn't affect the force between B and C. Okay. B changes to one masslet, so then we'll have one half the force. Because if we think about, if we calculate like F2 is equal to big G, um, and then we've got two times two, and then over some distance R. For the new one, I've got F2 is G time, or F, this should have been F1, sorry. I get excited. G, and now I've got one times two over R. I know I forgot a squared there too. So one half the mass, I'm going to have one half the force. And then C changes to four masslets. I'm double, doubling the masslets, so I'm going to double the force. All right. Student wishing to investigate how air pressure affects gravitational force weighs a book at home and then climbs to the top of a very, very high mountain to weigh it again. The student has been told the air pressure is very low on top of the mountain. What is wrong with his student's reasoning? Um, so you're actually changing two things. You're changing air pressure. But at the top of a very high mountain, you're also changing the um, the distance to the center of the Earth. So I'm going to um, do a very exaggerated picture. So here's the Earth. Here's my mountain on it. If I weigh myself here, then the distance to the center of the Earth would be that. If I weigh myself on top of the mountain, I'm increasing my distance. So this is going to be RE plus the height of the mountain. And so I'm changing that in addition to lower air pressure. And you cannot change two variables if you only want to know the effect of one.